Hello, thank you for joining us today. My name is Joan Rutter Ward and I am the host of Silver Sage. And today we are filming in the Antique Mall in Hesperia. This is such a lovely place with, if you like antiques like I do, this is a, a nice place to come and just spend an afternoon and just look at all the wonderful things that they have here and pick up a few things to take home. Okay, if you're someone that's over 50, and you've always wanted to write or have a book published and you're thinking it's too late or um, maybe you're thinking your brain cells aren't working as well as they used to uh, these ladies are here to tell you that that's not so they're over 50 they got published you can too so we're going to find out how they did it we're going to find out more about the books that they uh, wrote and ones that they're even working on now in this section, what we're going to focus on is getting, finding out what their story, their journey is. And then um, in the next section, they're going to have some ideas and some suggestions for you to go ahead and get that book published. Okay. I want to thank you ladies for joining me today, Diane and Nichelle. Thank you for taking time out of your busy day and coming on the show today to be able to talk to our guests and encourage them to go ahead because each one of you um, in getting your books published I mean it was a challenge yes. it was a challenge right okay yes. so um, um, in fact why don't we start off with that why don't you tell us some of the challenges that you had in getting your book published we'll start with you Diane well um, the first challenge I have is I didn't really like to write and I would admire other people that wrote or wrote poetry or or they had a passion to write. Um, I, I had a passion to teach, and uh, that was mainly my passion. And um, so the Lord started dealing with me about writing. Um, I n met someone that, I went to a class on writing, and the teacher said, when you're ready to write your book, I will help you. So don't worry about it, just keep writing. And so I did, I kept writing. And 16 years later, I called her. <laughs> and I said, I'm ready now. <laughs> she said, I don't do that anymore. I'm a missionary. <laughs> so she referred me to someone else who did become my, my editor. And she had a critique service, Susan Titus Osborne. And she helped me uh, to develop better writing skills. But I had a whole two drawers full of things I had written, but not brought any of them together. Okay. Well, see, that's encouraging to know that even after 16 years, <laughs> you know, you decided to go forward with it. Yes. Okay, with great. A, with a nudge from the Holy Spirit. Well, okay, so you had a nudge, so hey, we're here to nudge you. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay, so Nichelle, what type of challenges did you have? Well, my first challenge was intimidation because I had never written anything. And like her, I didn't care about writing. And I love to read other people's work, but I never thought that I could write my own book. Mm -hmm. Because of circumstances and situations in my own life, I limited myself. So I decided one day um, that maybe I can write. And through many prophetic words that I had gotten about me writing, I thought, you know, it's one of those things just kind of put on the shelf. Mm -hmm. And through the Holy Spirit, one morning, I actually woke up uh, in the middle of the night, really. And the inspiration, I, I had this vision just kind of like went across, you know, I could see the whole, and I keep pencil and paper in my bed because ideas come in the night. So mm -hmm. I wrote it down. And when I woke up in the morning, it was like, that would make a lovely movie. And I thought, I should write a book. 
So that was my main challenge. But when I began to write, I realized I was still kind of intimidated. So I had to walk through some different things in my own life. And then one day, uh, I just, the inspiration just hit me and I just got behind the computer and just started to write. You know, you, you get all these things about what you should do and what, I didn't do any of those. Okay, I didn't write an outline, I didn't brainstorm, I just got on the computer and just started to write. So the challenge me was, was getting beyond my own self. I just had to mm -hmm. let me get out of the way and just let, and you know, pray and ask the Holy Spirit just to give me the words to say. So the challenge was just me. I was my biggest challenge. Okay. All right. Now, you, I like what you guys said, uh, you know, about being inspired and mm -hmm. getting, um, you know, you got Holy Spirit inspiration. But what about someone that doesn't really know what that means? Mm -hmm. Or would you, I um, mean, you were inspired, but would you suggest somebody wait until they get some type of inspiration before they start writing? Well, um, I've been told just right. Because even if you have an inspiration, maybe for to begin something, that inspiration comes and goes and wanes. That's true. And so... Um, you just write what's on your mind. But when you're first writing, um, it's so good to do, like Ms. Cheryl was saying, just dive into it and start doing something. Mm -hmm. And you can, uh, you could, somebody else is gifted at editing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and somebody else knows punctuation. And the uh, interesting thing to me is, I found out that uh, several of the punctuation rules had changed since I was in school back in the, you know, dark 30s, way back. <laughs> the, uh, a lot of the punctuation had changed, and so if I would have been caught up in um, trying to change my punctuation and getting everything mm -hmm. done right, it wouldn't have been right. And uh, one other thing that I would say is uh, just keep a file on your computer and a hard file. Mm -hmm. Because my computer, one of my challenges is my computer literally died and they were not able to get back anything mm -hmm. uh, when I was uh, doing my writing process. Oh, okay. All right, so that, that's a good thing to remember, but we'll, we'll get more into that when we're telling people things they should do. But, you know, sometimes we forget you know, we should have a hard copy of something as well yes. because things happen. <laughs> you know, life happens. Uh -huh. Email so. it to yourself oh. also. Okay, yeah, that's enough. a good thing too, mm -hmm. to email it to yourself. Okay, so um, tell me, uh, Diane, what genre is your book? Mine is Memoirs, which is Slices of Your Life. Okay. And I've taken different slices where uh, it's called Overcoming the Enemy Storms, so specific storms that the enemy sent to try and get me to not fulfill the will and purpose of God on my life. Okay. All right. So I think we also, um, can you show us um, your book here and also um, explain a little bit about your background so people will know who the enemy is. You know, so if you could go on and um, so they could just understand that a little bit better. Yeah, I'm... Um, I have a master's degree in theological studies, and I've been a pastor for years and um, leadership trainer. And so I'm really talk coming from a spiritual point of view. Um, he, Jesus said in John 10:10 10, 10, that the enemy comes to steal, kill, and to destroy, and I have come to bring life more abundantly. So he contrasts the purpose of the enemy. And uh, my book also refers to Revelation chapter 12, which gives the story of Satan, who was Lucifer, falling to the earth, and that his, his intent was to destroy mankind that was made in the image of God. Okay. All right. So your book, uh, so when you're talking about the enemy, you're talking about, this is a spiritual struggle between good and evil. Right. Okay. And so we're talking about Satan. Right. All right. Great. And... Um, Okay, Ms. Cheryl, what is the genre of your book, and what is it about? Well, actually, can, my book... Can we, can, you, can we see your book here? This is a copy of my book. Okay. And uh, my book is really a fiction book because it's not about a particular person. The uh, main character in the book is a character, but it's, it's also an inspirational book. It's, I just didn't write it 
just because I wanted to tell a story. Although mm -hmm. I, I don't see myself as an author, I really see myself as a storyteller. That's why I think the book was so easy for me to write. But um, I love the fact that my character is a woman who's gone through a whole lot of things. Jesus said he came that we might be healed and made whole. Mm -hmm. But when we go through life's situations and circumstances, a lot of times we get fragmented. And to become whole, we need to find those parts of ourselves that's broken and kind of pull them back to ourselves. Mm -hmm. So the thing that my book is about, it's about helping her. Her name is Maggie. Maggie's an amazing woman. And I'm, one day I wish I'd become just like Maggie. But <laughs> she uh, was able to walk through with the help of pastors and people that could speak into her life. She helped, they helped her to find her way back to wholeness. So okay. that's mainly what my book is about, is getting people to wholeness so that they can fulfill their called destiny and purpose. Okay, now what is the uh, name of your book? My, the name of my book is Needed, All for Love's Sake. And the title is very interesting. Maggie found herself value and her mm -hmm. self-worth in what she did for everybody else. But when you help other people, God turns around and causes them to be able to speak in your life to really help you. And so Maggie found her help by helping others. Oh, okay, that's great. Yes, that's just like the, um, uh, well, I, in teaching as well. You know, they say as you teach, you Absolutely. learn. So mm -hmm. it's along the same premise of that. Okay, that sounds really good. All right, now, ladies, can you tell me um, what audience did you write for? Wh who is your book directed to? Well, my book is directed to anyone who has gone through tragedy in life. Even though she's a female, because I can identify with females, Men go through things, too, that sometimes they can't recover from, and they need help recouping the lost sides of their life and the broken parts of their mm -hmm. life. Jesus says he's a, he's a potter, so in order to have, have a, 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 a vessel put back together, we have to find its parts. Mm -hmm. So when we go out and find parts, men get just as broken as women do when they're going through life, too. So sometimes if we are meeting people and they're not, you know, seem like what they could be, and you, you, you see them not reaching their full potential. So it's for men, it's for women, it's for children, and I've had everybody to read it, and I've gotten some amazing feedback, and even to where they come to me and they're crying, because, like, they found themselves. Those, there are so many uh, different feelings and emotions that's in the book, mm -hmm. so they can grab hold to whatever part, and it's like, oh, I found myself. Well, that's mm -hmm. the purpose of the story, is when you find yourself and you can pull back those broken pieces of your life, and you can become whole like Jesus said we could. This is why you took a second job. Why you taught yourself how to fix the plumbing. Why you'll do whatever it takes to keep your home. And that is why we want to help. We are making Home Affordable, a free government resource that can make paying the mortgage easier. Call 888-995-HOPE today. Tell us about your book. Who is Who did you write for? I wrote for people that were really needing to understand the difference between God as a loving father and Satan as a calculated enemy. Mm -hmm. That many times we blame God for mm -hmm. things that the enemy does. Mm -hmm. And when is a storm in our life a, a test for growth and character? And when is a storm sent to destroy us? Because the enemy is always wanting to destroy. So I've really written it for people that are passionate about prayer, passionate mm -hmm. about understanding God's ways, not just reading the Bible and going your way. Okay, that's good. So what you're saying is that there is a distinction in the things that happen um, between good and evil. Because generally when something bad happens, people are, you know, the, the general consensus is to say, or what we hear, um, is people saying, why did God let this happen? when it's not necessarily, it's not a God thing. Or, you know, even if you look at your insurance policies, they have acts of God. What are those? Those are the, the floods, the, um, you know, all the disasters that happen. Everything is attributed to God. So in essence, you're saying 
God gets a bad rap sometimes. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. And on the cover is um, Jesus in the midst of a storm. And you're already in the storm, but he's inviting you to walk on the water with him in the storm, not drown in the storm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So these things can come against you in life, but there is a way that you can overcome yes. these storms yes. in life. My okay. main theme is to help people learn how to overcome in the midst of the enemy's storms. Okay. Uh, my oldest son is serving a life sentence in prison, mm -hmm. and I wrote about my younger son who had a major head injury, mm -hmm. and um, and I and you were so instrumental in helping him regain his identity and gather his fragments, mm -hmm. and um, and uh, he's recovered now, and uh, he wasn't supposed to be able to go back to school. Now he's a um, one of the lead people in Kroger at their corporate headquarters with with three degrees now. Oh wow! And um, and then his daughter almost died at birth. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I've covered those things. I went through a public divorce. So I cover just slices of each one of those things and show how God led me mm -hmm. and rescued me through his grace in the midst of the enemy storm. Oh, okay. Because, see, I think a lot of people would probably look at that and say, you're a pastor and you believe in God, so how did all this, how did God let all this bad stuff happen to you? But you understand, so in this book, you explain you know it's not God that did these things to you yeah and that we are also um, leaving off people's will yeah. I show in the book how God warned um, my son several times through me and others before he committed a major crime and that sent him to prison mm -hmm. so uh, God never ever takes away our free will if he was going to do that, he would have slapped the fruit out of Adam and Eve's hand. Right. <laughs> and he'd have, he'd have overrode the free will of the first couple, and then he wouldn't have had to send his son. Mm -hmm. Okay, right. Okay. Well, which is my second book, oh. <laughs> is on oh. presumption, and I am doing one full chapter and maybe a second one on God's sovereignty versus free will. I have a question for you. I was in a writing class recently and the instructor there said anytime a writer is writing a story, he's actually interwoving parts of his or her own story into their writing. What do you guys think of that statement? Okay, I'll go first. I totally 100% agree with you. And then here's the reason why, as I wrote the book, you're writing so you're not thinking. You're just writing whatever comes to your mind and you're writing it on paper. But it wasn't until I was editing the book that I realized how much of my actual life was woven into the story. Mm -hmm. I could be Maggie in a lot of areas. There's a lot of things that happened to her that I didn't go through per se personally, mm -hmm. but some parts of what of those things, you know, attached itself to me. And I got a lot of my fragmented pieces replaced back to me by just editing my own book oh, so wow. uh you know and you know everybody has a story you have that's a life true. you got a story that's so right. everybody could write it's mm -hmm. no excuse you know you got a story you could write it not everybody's called to write and that's okay too but when you are writing a book uh you 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 have to put your life in it because you know more about you than anybody else and you can write your life easier than you can write somebody else's that's definitely true. Everyone does have a story. Mm -hmm. That's right. And um, and every story that there is, someone else can learn from it. Absolutely. Whether it's good or bad, <laughs> someone can learn from someone else's story. Mm -hmm. True. Okay, but what, what do you think about that statement? Well, I agree with that statement wholeheartedly. And um, I'm also wanting to stir up the writing in others by having a writing class the first Saturday in March mm -hmm. in Riverside. And and no one knows anything better than their own life right. and their mm -hmm. own story. I was asked once to write a story about a pickle in a writing class. Uh, and so they were showing us that you could write about anything. And next thing I know, that pickle became parts of me. <laughs> so, yes, you do write about yourself because that's what you know best. 
and I wholeheartedly agree with that. And uh, we shouldn't be afraid to touch those uh, uh, those areas that need healing, mm -hmm. and areas that you're processing through your healing, and know that um, uh, a statement came to me as I was finishing my chapter on uh, grace out of my book, Overcoming the Enemy Storm. The last chapter is on grace, and uh, the thought that came to me is that we are a trophy of God's grace. Mm -hmm. And every testimony that we have, we have many testimonies, uh, is a trophy of what God's grace has done. And he, it's like on hold, on the shelf, and when God needs it, he pulls that trophy out and says, tell this person about that story. Tell oh, this I person see. about that story. Oh. And then that becomes a trophy of his grace, and it gets them to believe in the grace of God for themselves. Oh, that's pretty interesting. I never thought about it like that, but that's a good, um, I can get a picture in seeing, yeah. in seeing that. Well, I, I do have to say that I admire both of you ladies, mainly because... You have written and gotten published. And neither of you really thought of yourselves as writers before. Mm -hmm. And here I am. I've wanted to be a writer since, I, <laughs> since the beginning. And I've written a lot of things. Nothing's published yet. And so, I mean, like a book or anything. I've had little stories and things articles. published that I've, mm -hmm. yeah, articles that I've submitted other places. So you're an inspiration to me. Now, I'm not going to say, you know, within a year I'm going to have something published, but I'm going to start working more towards getting the, the things that I have uh, published as well. We are going to end this section here, and in the next section we're going to have you give suggestions that others can follow that want to write and want to get published, because I'm sure I can use some of those so I can just go on and move forward with a desire that I've had within me since childhood. Mm -hmm. So um, I want to thank you for being here, and we're going to um, take a break now, and we're going to come back with the next section where they're going to give some advice and some suggestions that you may be able to use to go further in your writing career, or whether it's a career or not, and just getting things written and getting them out there, because you, like everyone else, there's a story, there's something inside of you that you can share, that others can benefit from. So thank you for joining us today. This is the moment I knew his future had no boundaries. There are some moments only the forest can inspire. Find yours at discovertheforest.org. As a professional photographer, a question that I'll get frequently from people who are looking for cameras for their own personal needs is, what kind of camera should I buy? Generally, I'll respond with the question, what is it that you need the camera for? Are you looking for something just for general picture taking needs? Are you becoming a serious hobbyist? Do you want to be able to create images for your own wall decor? With such a high percentage of the population these days owning smartphones, probably most are satisfied with the camera that is in their phone. For those who want to do more than take snapshots or want to have more control over the images that they make, a dedicated camera is probably the best way to go. So today, I'm going to cover what's known as a point and shoot such as this Canon ELF model here. Uh, you can find a really nice point and shoot camera such as this Canon ELF for a hundred dollars or less. With the point and shoot they're portable. You can easily put them in your pocket or your purse. Also it has a zoom lens which the smartphone camera does not have. I regularly host photography workshops for teens. We use point and shoot cameras like these. Some of my students, we've been working on a project entitled Flower Girls. And with the students that are using the point and shoot cameras, 
they've been able to create some incredible images, which I will be showing shortly. There are quite a variety of point and shoot cameras out there for your selection. I will list on our website the ones that we use and have had good results with. I do suggest that you check online reviews from customers who have purchased and used the camera that you are considering buying. In the next program segment, I will be talking about the compact digital cameras like this Canon G-Series camera. Thank you.